Hello guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to get started with dithering in Photoshop using a free download and a few tricks I've picked up while working with dithering in my own work which I'll show some of on screen right now. Before I start this video, this video took forever to put together and like even now I've got like a script and I've got all my stuff open and um, I researched again or like just went over a lot of the stuff that I read about and learned about when I first started working in this style. I've really tried to explain this in a way that can impact your design work rather than just showing you a cool effect and I never asked for this in my videos uh, but if you could share this with like your creative friends or interact with the video um, leave a like or a comment or whatever it would help a lot I am now regretting calling this Dither Daddy because I'm gonna have to say that over and over again in this video but I recently did a few updates for this pack and the free version is kind of what I wish I had when I started learning about this stuff. To download Dither Daddy, go to studio.aaa.com. I've already loaded it up here, obviously. Navigate to the free category and it's here. So just take this one through checkout. Uh, you can select free for the free version, or obviously you can get the full version if you want, but you don't need that for this video. So take this one through checkout. You'll be redirected to a download page and you'll also get an email with the download links as well. So go grab the files from wherever you like. So while you do that, I'm gonna just explain dithering a little bit because there are all kinds of dither effects and it can be confusing terminology. This bit might be a bit boring, uh, just disclaimer, but before you understand dithering, you need to understand something called quantization. If you've ever worked in a digital audio workstation software like Logic Pro uh, or Ableton, you probably have come across quantization before, but basically, just like in really, really simple terms, if you have a ruler and you are gonna draw uh, a little mark on a bit of paper, every other millimeter and you did that all the way up to 10 centimeters and you quantized your markings instead of having a marking at for example 4.2 centimeters um the quantized number would just be four centimeters because quantizing it's going to simplify your data like whatever it is whether it's markings on a ruler or uh, like i mentioned if you are a musician and you're writing a melody you can quantize the notes in the melody to your tempo so that they're on beat. You can then do that to, if you've got a drum loop um, or a drum machine, you can quantize the drum beat to a, a set BPM or tempo and then they match. So that's, that's what quantizing is. This is relevant, I promise. So if you move that over into our image graphic world, if you imagine any image you like, but in black and white, so basically every single pixel on your image in like data computer terms exists between absolute black and absolute white so it's on a gray scale if absolute white is the number 100 and absolute black is zero uh, and you're not in 2024 and you don't have like a fancy monitor and a GPU and you are displaying your image on a monitor that can only represent a certain number of colors and shades not all the colors in your grayscale. Now you need to basically quantize all these pixels and the numbers they represent on this scale so that your image can now be displayed. Because an image is more complex, I'm gonna stop doing this now, but you get the visual that I was trying to trying to give you. Maybe I'll put a visual actually on the screen. Um, but yeah, so because an image is obviously much more complex than just a melody or um, the ruler example I gave, Obviously an image is much more complicated than that. You're gonna get some errors where some pixels are rounded to the wrong value and the image is just either corrupted or looks wrong and it's not displayed correctly. So this is where dithering was like created or introduced. Dithering is used to avoid or hide errors when you are quantizing your black and white image. So at this point, it goes like a little bit computer science here and I'm not built for that really, but basically dithering will introduce noise and additional pixels pixels into your image that will reduce the visibility of any errors in the quantization um, that are caused by the complexity of your image. So basically you had quantization which can be used to simplify data whether it's an image or a series of notes but because images are far more complex than that yeah that's why that's why we did it that's well that's not why we're dithering today we're dithering today to just make cool stuff now but um, initially dithering that's why it was kind of like invented created introduced whatever you want to call it so 
There are tons of methods for dithering. It's not clear to me which one Photoshop uses. Um, the most popular one is called Floyd Steinberg. That's the dithering that you're gonna see uh, on most like GIF files. If you wanna get really into dithering, you can look up things like Atkinson dithering, which was made specifically for the original Apple computer. You can also look into things like Ditherpunk and games like Monkey Island, um, Return of the Obra Dinn, that was one that came out recently that used a lot of dithering. There's another game that I really like that I'm blanking on now. What was that game called that we played? Um, where it's like you did a detective. Thimbleweed Park. I'm going to carry on recording my video. Alright, alright. Yeah, Thimbleweed Park uh, has like some parts of the game that are the characters like using a computer. And I remember a few years ago, um, yeah, that has like some cool dithering effects in it. Or um, I think Papers Please as well. Uh, yeah, you can find dithering everywhere used as a stylistic choice rather than a functional tool um, nowadays because obviously we've got GPUs and nice screens now. For me, I think like primarily you need to understand when you start to use dithering in your work that this is not a filter gallery effect. It's not like a trend or like um, an adjustment layer or, or whatever it was. It exists because we used to need to simplify images, basically. So yeah, uh, like as you can tell, uh, I really like this stuff. Like I really like dithering. It just kind of tickles my brain in the right way. I'm gonna link an amazing blog post. In fact, I've got it open here already. This is uh, an article that's just titled Ditherpunk. Uh, it's by a guy called Surma. I don't know if that's his real name or uh, like an alias. Uh, you can see he mentions the Oberdin game here as well. I won't go over all this and I won't even pretend I understand all this. Like, I don't know what that, any of that means. Yeah, if you want to learn more about this stuff, like it really is a rabbit hole and I think it's really interesting. Maybe you just want to get to the effect and I will get to that in a second. As part of like the dithering umbrella, there is also bitmapping and indexing, which are a little bit different. Uh, bitmapping isn't something I fully like understand. In, in Photoshop, indexing is uh, kind of like dithering, but you can add a color palette in there as well. Um, outside of Photoshop, I might be wrong, but outside of Photoshop, I believe indexing is used uh, with like colors for GIF files and other file types. Um, if you're really into computer science and I missed anything out for like indexing and bitmapping, please don't shoot me. So yeah, I'm fine. I will get into Photoshop now. Um, chances are you don't need to know all that uh, for what you're doing today and you just want to make your image look pretty and cool like this, which is fine. Um, I'm going to explain all that now, but it's always worth knowing where your work is coming from in my opinion. So. I've covered this bit before, but get your action from here. And when you're in Photoshop, you can install actions by just double clicking the file when Photoshop is open. So yeah, you can just double click one of these and it should install fine. Uh, if it doesn't, or if you're having issues, if you're not experienced with actions, just go to window and click on actions. And then when this little panel pops up, use these three lines at the top right, the little hamburger menu, click on that go down to load actions and then navigate to wherever you downloaded the files from my website to and just install them through there. And then you're gonna get a uh, dither daddy pop up in the list here of effects you can use in the actions panel. Um, so if you've got the full pack, you're gonna have like 54 or 52 actions here showing up. Um, the free version is simpler. Both of them come with like safety features basically because you can pretty easily fuck up your whole PSD file if you do this wrong. So every single action is gonna tell you off basically if you are working with unsaved changes. You can turn this off now and I'll show you how to do that. But if you lose your work, it's your fault, not mine. So yeah, to turn off the safe mode, just delete this here that says do not delete. Uh, if you got the full version, it, it, some Photoshop is weird sometimes and it might want you to delete all the do not delete actions. Um, so yeah, just go through and delete them all if you wanna remove safe mode. I would recommend just getting used to it before you do that though. So the reason it can mess up your work is because to dither anything in Photoshop, you first have to convert your PSD to grayscale, which is gonna flatten all your layers. And then once you've converted it to grayscale, you have to convert it again to bitmap, which is to like downscale your image. 
obviously that's inconvenient that's why i told you to download these actions because it's going to save you a ton of time and headache by creating instanced versions of each color space uh, in a smart object so your output exists in your initial psd file in whatever color profile you started in if that makes sense so to finally get into it after all this context i've been droning on about i'm going to discuss three properties with you today to explain how you're going to work with dithering density pattern and scale density will refer to how compact your dithering is scale will refer to the level of detail in your dither so low detail means big dots, uh, big like bitmaps, big patterns. Low density means lots of black space. High density means like lots of like little clusters of your dithered pattern. Um, it'll make sense when you when you get going with it. Uh, and pattern refers to the type of action you will select on your actions panel. Um, if you got the free version, you have got the diffusion dithering. Um, if you've got the paid version, you've got indexing, uh, bitmaps, and you've got uh, obviously more diffusion options as well. This is a little graphic I created in Blender. I've also got this image of an eye and I've got this picture of the moon. These are all from stock photo websites other than this one. And I'll put the links in the description if you want to just follow along. So to start on the moon image, looking at the list of actions you've got, you'll see there is a low, medium and high tag on each effect. Um, that refers to the scale of the dither, so it will directly tie into the level of detail in your output. Uh, I'm going to go for the medium one. You can go for whatever you want. So click on. I'm going to click on the action and then at the bottom here, I'm going to click play. Uh, sometimes this gets cropped out in the video, so I'll just pull that out of my photoshop panel so just click the play button there obviously make sure you've got your layer selected so i've included instructions so if you get lost or whatever there's usually a little message that pops up but basically this first option is giving you the opportunity to grayscale your image yourself rather than letting photoshop apply the shitty default grayscale basically there's a reason i've chose a black and white image to start with because this one it doesn't matter now you can you can try this stuff there obviously black and white the image was already black and white so it doesn't matter what you put so i'm just going to press ok on that one press rasterize so next you've got a curves adjustment and this is just like your last chance to impact the tonality and the contrast in the image before it gets dithered so bear in mind that areas of the image that are closer to white are going to be dense so if i do this and just make basically the moon all white the dither is is gonna just be a cluster of like it's just gonna be like a blob basically um if i leave it in the middle it's kind of all very similar shades of gray and you might struggle to see all the little details so i'm gonna like ramp the contrast so that these areas that are really really dark here they're gonna have very sparse dithering so if we go back now to the um if I just open up this article again and look at the Oberdin image, uh, you can see like, so you can see like on the planks on this image, there is very, very dense dither in here. Whereas in the sky, it's very sparse. So in there, like, I don't know how they dithered this, but the sky area would be really, really, really dark in comparison to the planks, which are probably like entirely white basically so yeah i'm just gonna ramp the contrast and as you can see it's like i said the areas where it was brighter like a far more dense and the areas where i kind of contrasted them out are just like really dark now um so i'm just gonna hide that i'll run it again just to show you what i mean if i were to ah, i see it's telling me off because i've not deleted my um safety feature so i'll just save that so i'm gonna run the high one on this one now Again, I'll just ignore the black and white because it's already black and white. But on this one, I'm going to just kind of crank it so it's like very, very bright. And if I zoom in, so it's so bright that the dithering is kind of just like, it's almost not even noticeable. So obviously it depends on context and what kind of image you're working on. But for me, uh, I prefer high contrast images before I dither. So I'm going to move on now to the... Uh, image of the eye i'll cover the black and white thing a little bit more for this image obviously because there's plenty of color in here but one of my favorite things about dithering is like i how i explained before how it's gonna add in the noise to your image to hide any like uh, errors you can input an image that is completely symmetrical and because of the like randomness uh, that comes with dithering what you get back in return is not going to look as stupid as this so obviously this is going to look stupid to your human eye because 
obviously you can tell that this is just just the same image twice uh, i'm just trying to put like an angle on them a little bit um and i'll probably just mask oh, it's just the eyes convert that to a smart object in fact i might just uh pull that eye in a little bit as well so yeah mess with whatever you're working on as much as you like beforehand obviously but so i'm going to save to avoid getting picked up by my safety feature thing uh, and I'm gonna run the medium action. Now, obviously on the moon image, we didn't get to do this, but for this one, we can use the black and white. So if you are used to just applying black and white by doing like control U and pulling the saturation down or um, just in any other way, basically, doing it this way gives you control over which colors are gonna be made black and which colors are gonna be made white. And for dithering, that helps us a lot because like I said before, the contrast of your image is gonna directly contribute to which areas are dithered more densely and more sparsely. So yeah, um, yellows, I'm just gonna pull down all the way. Uh, reds, uh, maybe yellows I'll push up and pull reds down. No greens, probably cyan, it's just the eyes. Pull that down, probably no blues. Yeah, barely any blue, definitely no magenta. So I press okay for that, rasterize, and then you're at the curves bit again. So I don't really I don't really think I'm gonna do a ton here. Yeah, I'm just gonna increase the contrast a little bit. Yeah, and this is the output. Let me just change the background to black. Obviously barring that bit in the middle, maybe if I just like content aware fill this maybe. Maybe I should cut this stuff out, but to be honest, uh, this is like, this is the experience dithering. Like you are gonna get images where you think, oh man, I should have added content away fill or I should have done this differently before I dithered it. And that's why the actions, in my opinion, help a lot because you've got that smart object there. So your effects from before is still preserved. And then now you can go and uh, work on the source image again, run the same action again and get your sort of improved output if you like. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to give this lady a monobrow, apologies, and I'm going to run it again. So this time I'm, I might just go like red all the way up, yellow all the way down, cyan all the way down, no blues, no magentas, and then you can even just do something crazy with the curves. And there you go, that one looks a little bit cooler. Obviously I can mask out the monobrow, so if I make the background black again. Uh, if you get any dithering outputs, because obviously like, like I said before, you are downscaling the images to add the dither. If you get any outputs that you're not happy with, bear in mind which scale factor you picked, like low, medium or high. And you can also use this low quality dither helper action as well, which just adds a little like Gaussian blur and a threshold effect you can then just tune the threshold effect to your dither to kind of control uh, like define a new edge on the sort of outskirts of the white little dots you've got in fact right I'm gonna um I'm gonna do the masking that I uh... I'm just gonna run some changes on this one as well so obviously because we've seen how it dithers uh, with two different like versions of the settings now I'm just gonna go and do this because I'm kind of determined to make this look at least cool without a monobrow if you like so all I'm doing here is just adding a mask I'm just gonna do it as quick as I can because I'm recording so yeah whatever I'll give that a go convert that to a smart object and um, let me see I'm gonna run a medium one so again, I'm gonna pull the yellow in, pull the red in a little bit, blues in, no magenta, no green. In fact, yeah, I'm gonna just swap the yellow and the red around a little bit. Um, rasterize, curves again, not much for the curves. And there we go, that's kind of more what I was looking for. If we swap the background to white, that looks much cooler than <laughs> the mono brown version again same thing so you can run the low quality dither helper even if it's not low quality if you just want to like redefine the edges and stuff uh so like something like that might be more suitable obviously because we've changed we've moved this image into two different like color spaces uh it's now got this white background from when it got flattened so i'm just gonna let me just disable these smart fillers uh, if you wanted this as a png like if you were moving it into another software come down here to add layer style go to blending options here where it says blend if gray if you just turn the current layer if you grab the white value and pull it in 
until until you're happy with it basically you can get it as a png and then obviously you just do file save as png or you can then work with it there like in photoshop um with that as the asset but the point being here is that because you've got the action to do the what is it so one switch to grayscale one switch to bitmap and then ordinarily you would obviously enter your bitmap settings change it back to grayscale change it back to rgb and then do your change like because you've got the action when you inevitably get it wrong or you want to change something or like as you just refine your like process for dithering you just end up with a lot of smart objects rather than having to constantly be going like image mode grayscale bitmap and then back to grayscale and then back to rgb and blah 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 but yeah i'm probably going to save this actually and use it somewhere because i do like this version now i have not got the monobrow and whatnot Moving on to the mouth thing that I did in Blender. So the same way I was talking before about the symmetry of the eyes and how the eyes look stupid when they were just together and the dithering kind of like masks that and, and it looks like more realistic once it's dithered. You can also work on your image in ways that you would never dream of working on your image if you are gonna then dither that image because the dithering will just hide and like pin over uh, and sort of mix in your stupid effects and imperfection so yeah i'm gonna liquefy these teeth into fangs if my computer doesn't crash because liquefy is a little bit laggy so like that obviously that doesn't look very realistic um but that's kind of the point so i'm gonna okay that you could even go through and like filter gallery your image before you dither it if you wanted to like experiment with what comes through on the dither and what doesn't. Um, I'm probably not gonna do that here because I'm aware that this recording is quite long now. Yeah, just to use the liquify as an example, um, gonna run the action again. Uh, I keep getting caught out by the safety thing. So yeah, I'm gonna run the action. Uh, because of the skin color being from like a direct uh, default like DAS model, the skin like texture wasn't very interesting. So I'm gonna pull the yellow and the reds all the way down. I'm just gonna pull everything down to be honest. And then, yeah, just add a bit of contrast with the curves. Okay, that. And I know like, maybe I've not used the best example with the liquify, um, but it doesn't look edited now because you've just glossed over it all with the dither. So maybe if I, I'm gonna clear the dither, um, not clear the dither, sorry, clear the liquify and i'm just gonna go in again and liquefy but let me see if i can um bear with me we'll see if this works i didn't like i planned the rest of the tutorial and i've gone off on like a little tangent here so yeah let's just see if those two and then for this one i'm just gonna try and bitmap it so again i'm gonna pull the yellow in pull the red in rasterize add some contrast with the curves yeah as you can see it's just drawn over i really like this one to be honest um it's just drawn over like any imperfections that would have been in my liquify yeah liquify maybe wasn't the best way for me to demo that for you uh but just for a stupid one if i do like spread strokes filter or like uh see so yeah if i did the sprayed strokes version now and you can see like the edges of the the logo a little bit have the sprayed strokes but even like you can't even really tell that that effect is on there so like my point is is that if you wanted to add something add an effect that is kind of stupid or um add an effect that has some cool bits in it but you maybe wouldn't use on a normal image but when you use it with dithering it like masks that and it, it just sort of goes over it and you just can't really even tell so knowing what you now know about the contrast and how it relates to the density of the dithering um you can apply that to text and shape layers so if i just hide this and i'm gonna create a text layer dharma because it's nice and big um and i'm gonna write man i don't know i'm gonna write that don't worry about the color i'm gonna scale it up and then I'm gonna go into the layer styles palette, layer styles window, and I've already got it set up here because I was testing this bit earlier, but if you just make a light gray to dark gray gradient, you've basically made a map there for the dithering 
that is basically at the top here where it's closer to white your dithering is going to be more dense at the top like the shape of the text is going to be very obvious and at the bottom it'll sort of spread out and, and thin out a little bit i'm just trying to see what my cat's doing so yeah if you then run a dithering action on your text you can get probably like a weird blurry output and then add the low quality dither helper onto the text oops let me make sure i'm on the right so yeah run the uh, the dither helper and get like a cool pattern in your text obviously you've still got the it still preserves the original text layer for you so if you chose the wrong scale like i probably just did a little bit you can run it again with a different scale and just skip through these menus because you don't need to do anything to your text for this uh, you can get like um where am i yeah you can get like some cool uh text effects that has the dithering like sort of masked into the image if you wanted to you can even uh if you go into the bevel and emboss make sure your shadows are high and do something really big with the size and the depth if you dither that obviously this looks like really crunchy and um low quality but if you start messing with the uh, the layer styles a bit more like you can get some cool shapes to be like appearing in your text i just wanted to include that as well because if you did a, a regular white text layer um nothing will happen so go mad with the layer styles uh do it to chrome text or do the bevel uh thing i just showed you um and experiment with it until you kind of get what you want you can now implement this into your work in like a mixed media kind of way or you can go down the glitch art route and add some like and um textures and stuff that way but Primarily in this video, I don't want to go too off the path here. This is how you can get to dithering using the actions that uh, you downloaded at the start of the video. So I'm going to call it there for this video, but hopefully you learned something that can help you with your future design work. I've literally never spoke on camera for this long uninterrupted. So I'm going to go rest my brain and then edit this video later on. This year I'm doing one free download every single month. Like, subscribe, all that stuff, because uh, this is going to take forever to edit and I'll see you in the next one.